Good morning, friends and fellow traders. This is Doug Campbell with Right Way Options, and this is the morning market prep video for October 26th, 2020. Hey everyone, I want to say thank you so much to all of the well wishes and everything. Um, I truly, truly appreciate it. Um, as you guys know, I had a little surgery last Thursday, um, uh, hernia surgery, and um, I'm still dealing with obviously quite a little bit of uh, pain as far as it goes, but I'm healing up nicely uh, back in the saddle. So uh, thank you, everyone. I truly appreciate all the kind words of support. Well, we had kind of an interesting end to our week with just a little bit of back and forth. We've had kind of a mixed bag of earnings results, and we just see this uncertainty continuing to crop up more and more and more. Now, we have to realize we're only about a week away from the election. We have um, coronavirus cases surging, um, hitting new records here in the United States. Um, we have a big week um, of earnings events and a big week of economic events, creating kind of the, well, the perfect storm of uncertainty here for the market. And what that means for us is anything is possible. We're gonna have to be really on our toes if you decide to get involved in this market. So how about we settle in, let's buckle up, and let's get ready for the Monday edition of the Morning Market Prep video. So this morning, everyone, we have the futures pointing lower. Um, we're looking at a gap down this morning that has slightly improved since I got up this morning. But you can see we are looking at a gap down this morning of about 250 points, a little bit more than that at the moment as we continue to react here in um, just a, a world of complete uncertainty. Um, so let's take a look at the technicals of the chart and see if they can help us out here at all. First off, one of the things I wanna point out is that we're right down in this area and we're testing some price support in the chart. So this gap down this morning, pushing down here is testing pretty hard some of the support levels. We have to notice that our short term trend right here is in a downtrend. Our little bit longer term trend is also showing us that potential downtrend. It's going to be extremely important for us to hold on to this price support. And as you can see, we're struggling here. We broke this um, uptrend that we had for a short period of time. We're struggling here with an awful lot of uncertainty. And if we take a look, I mentioned this um, last week, the high probability that we would soon be testing the 50 day moving average. That looks like that is going to occur this morning here on the Dow. We're gonna gap down, test that 50 day moving average. We have not been, been able to really provide enough um, shall I say, inspiration for the bulls to really push hard. We haven't been getting that big inspiration in the earnings reports. We haven't been getting it through the news cycle, which of course everyone uh, is continuing to set on pins and needles, waiting for Congress to get their act together and maybe pass some kind of stimulus. But as that continues to flip-flop around um, with the uncertainty of when or if or any of those things, we still have an awful lot of um, things to deal with here in the market. And impacts of um, rising virus cases are certainly starting to weigh on the overall market. So it's gonna be critical, gonna be really critical in here that we find some price support off of that 50 day moving average and hold. Should we fail, should we push down, break down below that 50 day moving average, we could really create some significant technical damage in the charts. That doesn't mean that we can't recover from it, but the technical damage will be pretty substantial with lower highs being created in the market, failures as we've tried to rally back up, earnings that have been really less than inspirational in a lot of places um, in the market. So we've got all of these struggles. So watch that carefully. If we were to fail that 50 day moving average, it could create some ugly technical damage in the charts. Let's take a look at the SPY. SPY 
is also getting a bit of a pullback this morning, but notice it's trying to hold a little bit better than the Dow is at the moment. We're trying to perk back up here. This is a um, candle right here, TC2000. It now shows us the pre-market. And as you can see in, in that, we have this little candle, little doji candle, trying to show us that little tiny bit of bullishness where we're bouncing off the morning lows. Well, let's take a look here. If we take a look at the price action in the chart, we have to admit that we've kind of broken through that support in that price action, but that 50 day moving average trying to hold us as support could be the saving grace here in the market. But once again, we have to look at some of the other technicals in the chart. We did break that downtrend. We are in a current downtrend and our bigger downtrend remains in effect. So that uncertainty continues to swirl out there. We need to hold that 50 day moving average. Um, if that were to fail, that would create that technical damage that could be a problem for us. Let's take a look at the Qs. Now, Qs um, has been um, that index that has been the strongest of the indexes throughout the year, but it's also that index that's really showing some of the stress um, on these earnings reports where companies are not being able to produce um, earnings to really support um, these current price levels. There's some concern out there for that. And as you can see, um, little bit of a problem going on now. Now this right here is a current downtrend and what we see right here in this chart is a consolidation trying to hold that 50 day moving average. Now what that tells me within that downtrend, downtrend is still in play, that we kind of have to favor or move with the downtrend in that chart in that potential failure of that 50 day moving average. We cannot be terribly bullish here on this chart until we see that stock actually break that downtrend and prove to hold it as support. Until that point in time, we still run that risk of that potential failure under that 50 day and creating that lower high in the market that no one really was hoping that we would ever see, but we are facing that now. And the uncertainty that continues to swirl out there might make it a little tough to bring inspiration to some of those bulls. Let's take a look at IWM. Now, IWM has surprisingly held up better than all the other indexes. And you can see consolidating in this range up here, pushing against resistance in the chart. Now, I think one of the reasons that is the case is we have um, maybe a little bit of a push toward that small cap, hoping that those small caps will kind of pick up where there might be a little more value there. We have pushed the Dow, we've pushed the SPY, we've pushed uh, the, the NASDAQ to perfection price levels and beyond. And um, the IWM is lagged behind. So maybe we may be reaching for a little bit more value here in the market, hoping for those sh um, small caps to start picking up a little bit. Um, we'll have to watch that closely. However, with oil prices falling this morning, that could be a bit of a challenge here for the Russell. So watch that close. Let's take a look at the VIX. Now that VIX has just been one of those perplexing places here in the market for some time. Notice we continue to just bounce around between our rising 200 day moving average and our 50 day moving average that has started to turn higher. So we've been, we've been bound by both sides of those averages and trying to um, stay in this area. But Boy, there's just so much uncertainty in the market. We could easily get that news report that whips us one way or the other, meaning that we could get that stimulus maybe that um, emboldens the market and our um, VIX finally breaks down below that 50-day moving average, which would be nice to see. On the other hand, we could continue to hear about um, issues around coronavirus or anything like that, um, adding more pressure. We could get some bad news, re um, news reports in the economic calendar or earnings calendar and um, have that fear come in and spike us up above that. So we're going to really have to be on our toes, um, particularly this week as we head in toward that election. The uncertainty in the market is palpable and we could experience really quick um, whipsaws, intraday reversals uh, based on news-driven events, 
and we're going to have to really stay on our toes if you choose to be trading in this market. It could be pretty volatile. Let's take a look at T2122. This is the four week new high, new low ratio. And I got to tell you, this has been one of the better indicators here lately telling us where we have danger in the market. And notice that last week at the end of the week, we were rallying back up. We pushed right back up here into this bearish reversal zone. If you notice, I have this marker out here. This is our bearish reversal zone up here. This is our bullish reversal zone here in the chart. And you can argue or say, you know, I don't think this has any merit on the market. Well, you can go back on this as far as you want and test it. It just works. And what you can see is that we're back up here in that bearish reversal zone and that's gapping us down this morning. Now, T21 to 22 doesn't tell us when a move, a bearish move or a bullish move might occur. It just tell us, tells us when we're in risk of those potential moves. And Friday, it left this up here where we were in, you know, posing that risk for a potential pullback. And we're certainly getting that this morning. Now, please be really, really careful. This does not necessarily mean we have to zoom all the way to the bottom. Um, as you can see, we've zoomed down before and we found support around the mid range and found enough inspiration to rally back up. So this doesn't provide us how much of a directional move that we can have. As a matter of fact, what this is really showing us right now is the incredible volatility of this market and the tremendous danger that everyone trading this market has to accept if you want to play that game. Um, huge volatility, lots of uncertainty, news-driven events could move us very quickly, completely reverse us in about half a heartbeat. So make sure you have the temperament to be involved in this market. Let's take a look at our economic calendar for today. Now we do have a busy week on our economic calendar, but this morning, not a tremendous amount to move us around. We have new home sales this morning. We'll want to pay attention to that. Obviously, homes have been very, very strong. Home sales with lower interest rates have been very strong. That's been one of the bright spots in the economy right now. We'll want to watch that pretty closely as that number comes out. Could move the market around just a bit. Notice as we go through the week, though, we just have a, a pretty big week of data. Durable goods, consumer confidence, international trade, petroleum status, GDP will probably be one of the big numbers for the week that we'll want to pay attention to. That has been a very ugly number here recently. Pay attention to that. Of course, jobless claims can always move us around personal incomes and outlays. Uh, and there are obviously some other reports in there could, that could move us. So quite a little bit of data this week for us to try to chomp through. And having said that we also have just an absolute deluge of earnings reports this week and they really ramp up after today today is one of our lightest well is our lightest day of the week um, after that it really starts to ramp up where we're going to see uh, nearly 300 reports on thursday so we're really ramping up these earnings reports we're going to see a lot of mixed sector reports and tech and all of those kind of things reporting. So expect a, an, uh, an extra dose of volatility in the market. Now, that being said, how about we take a look at some of the stocks that are reporting today we'll want to keep an eye on. And please keep in mind, guys, um, I can't cover all of the stocks that may be reporting, particularly over the, over the rest of the week. Please make sure you refer back to the blog. If you click the link right underneath the uh, title of the video, it'll take you back to the morning blog so you can see the list of stocks that um, I believe are somewhat notable for the day. Let's take a look here. We've got Boyd. Um, Boyd Cas uh, Gaming, the casinos have held up really, really well overall. Um, kind of remarkable considering um, uh, the damage that's being created in um, Corona land here. But as you can see, Boyd has been holding up well. Now we got a little pop and drop happening here where we're gapping, had a little gap up this morning, pulling back. That may be a reaction to that earnings report. But if that is the reaction to the earnings report, we're still holding trend, we're still holding price support. 
definitely worth keeping an eye on Boyd. Let's take a look at um, HAS. HAS, Hasbro reporting this morning. Same thing going on here where we popped up this morning, maybe had a good report, and now we're pulling back here in reaction to um, just the bearishness that we're seeing in the market. Notice we have an upside trend. Notice we're holding on to price support levels and um, we're looking pretty good here in the chart. So if this continues to hold up in here, this still has buying opportunity um, written all over it if it can hold that trend. Um, how about um, AGNC? AGNC will be reporting today. Let's keep an eye on this. This is a real estate investment trust, not known for big big moves but maybe something you want to pay attention to because of the high dividend yield that a, um, um, a real estate trust can provide 10.30 percent dividend yield not a bad yield if you're looking for some safety in the market how about twillow twillow has been one of those stocks that's just really rallied um, here recently holding up very very strong you can see just recently we had a little bit of a pullback where we may have over priced this thing for a short period of time. We had a little bit of a double top that occurred here, pulling back and breaking down through support. Now this morning we're trying to show just a little tiny bit of bullishness. We'll wanna watch that on its earnings event. Keep in mind where we are in trends and everything in that chart as we kind of watch um, uh, this company as it reports. How about PK? PKG. PKG. PKG will be reporting this morning. Packaging is um, a uh, obviously a area of the market that could be very, very strong in our current uh, condition in the country where everyone's buying online they're buying everything online and packaging shipping all of those kind of things are holding up quite strong let's keep a close eye on this as this guy reports holding up in a nice trend we've steepened that trend just a little bit we're holding on to support levels into that chart looking pretty good here in PKG so remember everyone look back to the blog if you want to see the entire list um, of that blog now now, please keep in mind, um, I've been out of commission here for a couple of days, but um, um, have taken a look at quite a few stocks, a few things that could be setting up. But remember that we've got this big reversal that's happening this morning. So everything we might look at could be completely different. Um, but before we take a look at some of those stocks, if you guys could do me a favor, if you could please click that subscribe button on YouTube and then also click that bell icon when it pops up so that you can continue to be notified every time I post one of these videos. You know, the purpose of these videos is not to provide hype or anything like that it, um, or prediction. Um, it's really to take a look at the technicals and try to determine how we should approach the market for the day. And if you've noticed today, I've been echoing a lot of caution in this market. This is not a market for a inexperienced trader. This is not a market that has a low for folks that have a low risk tolerance or those small new traders. This is a market for very adept, very experienced traders that have the ability to do that speed reversal in the market. Remember guys, one of our primary rules, one of our primary jobs as a trader is to protect our capital. We don't do ourselves any good if we gamble in a market where we have little to no edge. Consider that carefully as you approach the market for this week. We could have big news driven events and lots of potential volatility. Do not allow this market to chop up your account and remove you from the ability to trade, to, to, to kill that dream, because we just can't back off and say, look, today is not a good day for me to trade. Wait for the better opportunities. Trade less, make more. Let's take a look at some of these stocks that could be setting up. And please keep in mind, guys, that these are not a recommendation to buy or sell any security. Um, charts that I have really been watching here recently, holding up quite well, are some of the retail stocks. And you can see here just recently, Costco is getting a bit of a pullback here in the market. We extended this one pretty hard, but retail has been holding up extremely well. I still suspect Costco could have um, a period of time here where we still need to rest 
or consolidate. But keep an eye on that. That one should be on your list. Might be one you want to pay attention to. I've been watching and uh, actually own a position in FCX. Now, FCX has pulled back here just a little bit. And um, keeping a close eye on this chart, um, I think that copper has a pretty good story right now with all of the solar things going on, all of the electric vehicle things going on, all of the home building going on. Um, infrastructure improvements require an awful lot of copper. Keep an eye on that. FCX holding up well, looking pretty good. Now, as uncertainty of the market continues to stir around, we really should be keeping an eye on gold. GLD, you can see breaking a downtrend and trying to hold this little tiny uptrend here in the chart. It's still struggling with the price resistance right through this area on GLD. But if we're going to continue to print money, continue to debase the dollar, watch this closely. It is a possibility that gold will start getting a little bit of strength. So watch that close. Could be a place to look for some trading. We've seen some pretty good moves here recently in stocks um, uh, automotive, like General Motors. General Motors staying very, very strong, spiked up hard, pulling back. Now, with that move, I wouldn't want to chase this move up. But just keep in mind, if that can rest or pull back, consolidate in here above that trend, we have that next opportunity for that upside move. We also had Ford make a pretty decent move. Now, this one's got an additional problem where it's going to report here on 1028. I definitely wouldn't want to be trying to buy this ahead of earnings, but keep a close eye on this. We've broken through some major resistance in that chart and we're holding up in a trend. For the first time in a long time, it looks like Ford could be trying to come back around. So keep a close eye on that chart. Um, other retail like Walmart. Walmart has been holding up well, pulling back just a little bit, but we're still hanging in here on this trend. So as we pull back and rest over here toward this trend, I wanna look for that next opportunity to potentially um, move to the upside on that chart. Keep in mind, every chart we look at nowadays, we're gonna have to uh, pay attention to when that earnings report comes in and weigh those very carefully based on that earnings report. Also, let's take a look at some of the other stocks like Nike holding up, Home Depot holding in there pretty strongly. Tried to push up here on Friday um, and gap down, well, you can see gapping down this morning, but trying to lift back up here in the pre-market. Um, Home Depot trying to hold in that chart. Other stocks like Lowe's also hanging in here pretty darn well. So there are quite a few stocks out there to look at. I still favor stocks like UPS, FDX in this environment. These stocks are doing quite well considering um, the market condition and everybody buying online. So think about those carefully. There's a few for you to consider. Hey, I, once again, I want to say thank you to everyone and all of the well wishes on the surgery. You guys are awesome. I truly appreciate it. Your kindness is certainly noted and very much appreciated. Um, feeling quite good, everything um, progressing as it should. I'll be a little bit slower than I am in my movements, but other than that, I'm feeling pretty good and we'll be back here um, all week. So everyone take care, have an awesome, awesome week. Be careful, be safe, protect your capital. We'll see you right back here bright and early Tuesday morning. Have a great one, everyone.